so you can see I, I did a center line there. It would be a lot easier if we uh, if I had drawn the center line um, at the beginning when the edges weren't curved. Then you could have measured the 15 inches in, boom. So I had to, you know, kind of measure from this edge to this edge and kind of figure it out. Actually, I used the ailerons for this side, but anyway, long story short, I got that little um, center line on there, made a little tick mark uh, for the center of this piece, and lined those up real nice and even. And again, that's uh, off next to the profiled edge um, on this side, and then this one's just all the way up against there. This little section, I'll show you later, the uh, aileron control arms are actually going to do all sorts of funkiness, and this will be the area where they are able to escape out to the outside of the body. Um, I also started, you know, those things are turning yellow. <laughs> I started uh, taping them up with this translucent packing tape I'll tell you about in a second. Um, I thought I'd give you a few tips. Uh, the reason I did this before assembling, it just makes for some cleaner lines. So, I, you know, I just did the uh, sides of the top piece and, you know, everything wrapped it around all the way. I left the little inner section with that tape to make it easier for hot glue to go in there. Same thing on the rudder, I, you know, I wrapped around all the way, but on the bottom where it's going to be glued, I left it blank. On the uh, body portion, I went ahead and just put long strips of tape, tape all along and then cut it um, with a razor blade around the edges. And you can kind of see how it'll just make it nicer rather than having folding tape all over the place. Um, uh, as far as the wing edges, I thought I'd show you something. I wish I hadn't. I had left one undone, but basically what I did, I don't know if you can see, but this is a solid piece of tape across. I just put the piece of tape so that, you know, one end's hanging over this side and one end's hanging over that side. And um, every half inch or so I cut with the razor blade, so I made a whole bunch of little tabs that I, and then you can fold each individual tab over and pull them tight and it gets rid of the wrinkles. And that way when you're doing the long strips of tape, you don't have to go over the edges. Um, it makes it easier, you know, and it just makes kind of clean look. So, little tip there. Uh, as far as the tape itself, um, actually, a friend of mine gave me this roll um, that he used. It's really nice, thin, translucent tape. It's even thinner than traditional packing tape. However, um, RC Foam Fighters, I've, I've built a couple of their planes, and uh, there's a, a website they recommend that I. Um, have, I haven't tried yet, but I've heard great things about it's called Tape Brothers. And if you go to Tape Brothers and then um, on on the little left hand side, you can click where it says, um, what you call it, uh, ceiling tape. And then they have colored ceiling tape. It's about $340 a roll. Supposedly have uh, good shipping prices and they're pretty quick. So, um, and it should be pretty similar to this stuff. Um, not add a lot of weight to your plane. The only thing to watch with this is it is translucent. So if you get like a little. Um, shaving or like a you know some kind of piece of dust on the tape and then you tape it down not only will there be a bump but you'll be able to see through it. I have a couple spots where you can kind of see through and there's like a little eraser chunk <laughs> so you know be careful there. Um, I'll go ahead and keep uh, going on the assembly here and show you things as we go along. Okay so I got uh, all the pieces taped up. Um, you know wings all good to go um, and then of course I showed you all this stuff. Now I'm getting ready to start gluing the fuselage and I want to show you what I did here. I just went ahead and took a couple pieces of that yellow tape and uh, you know put the edges together and then taped over it. Um, and I did that before gluing anything. Uh, reason being this way I can squirt glue, I can bend this open, squirt glue into the, the crack there, hold it in the 90 degree angle that I want and none of the squeeze out will go out there. Um, it'll force it out here and reinforce the joint. And that, you know, it just gives you less to focus on, so you can really focus on keeping that at a 90 degree angle. So as you do that and glue it up, um, just make sure you're doing, uh, just really focusing on the angle there, trying to keep that 90 degree. Um, might not even be bad to make a little insert block to hold the sides perfectly square, but uh, I'll just go simple that way, show you uh, after I've got it all done. Alright, so as you can see, I went ahead and started gluing this together. You can see the glue in the, those cracks there, and it kind of held it at uh, 90 degrees on the edges. If anything, uh, you want to air on the side of slightly too wide. It's easier to squeeze it in than it is to fatten it back out. Um, and then I did this side, and I put the top on. This can be kind of a pain in the keister, <laughs> to be, be honest, um, it, because you got to kind of push out from the insides to get this to go all the way out to the edge, while at the same time pushing this on the inside, and then this wants to bow out. 
So you're constantly, you know, pushing it out a little bit, squeezing in, pushing this out, and just keep futzing with it until it starts to want to stay, and then keep, you know, keep pinching and different things. Um, I, I did find that that helps, just being able to push out right there and using my other hand to pinch in the middle and uh, hold the sides with my other fingers. It's kind of ridiculous, but if you can get that one ridiculous part done, not too bad. Uh, next thing we'll do here is um, you're going to take, you remember those tick marks we made on this little uh, tail piece? You're going to line those up um, so that they are just outside of the edges of the body, evenly so. And you'll glue that down first. Uh, and then we'll glue this tail piece on top of that, like this. And you kind of see that it lines up with the tick marks. Um, and then all the way up along that. And then lastly, we'll glue in the tail rudder piece. So I'll go ahead and do that and then show you the results. All right, so I got the plane together now. Uh, with a little rudder in the bag, you can kind of see. Um, I reinforced these little areas with uh, a glue and then kind of wiped my finger over it as it cooled to make it a little bit nicer finish to it just to reinforce it. But you can kind of see it's on there nice and stiff. Um, next thing you want to do is make your motor mount for the front. Um, this one, whoops, sorry, my camera's flipping around. This one I made out of just, I think it's like. 316 ply that I had. It'd be better if you made it out of like eighth inch ply. Uh, it's actually the same stuff, this underlayment board uh, that I used, you know, used as a little barrier for the razor blade. But anyway, um, you don't have to do it the exact same way I did, but I just, you know, measured and mine turned out to be just under two inches square. And um, I just uh, ended up cutting a couple holes and then bridging the gap, cutting that open to create some airflow there. Mount the motor up here. We'll glue that on, hot glue. And then for a uh, little servo, or not servo arms, but the little uh, control horns, uh, I made them out of popsicle sticks. Um, and I'll show you kind of how I did that. I just trace out the pattern I like. And uh, if you don't have these nifty style scissor thingies, don't worry about it. But you basically trace out the pattern you like and uh, just cut it out with a. What's this little doodad? These things are pretty handy for this stuff, so you don't have to go out to your bandsaw if you don't. And if you don't have one of those, that makes it exceptionally handy. Um, you can usually find them at hardware stores pretty easily. Well, there you go. A little control horn, and you just uh, drill with a 16th inch drill bit or whatever kind of um, wire you're using for your control surfaces. You want to match the diameter as best you can. And there you go, I just put a couple holes for different options. So I'll go ahead and glue those in. Um, actually, and by the way, when you're doing the ones for the aileron, it's not a bad idea to uh, make sure they're right on the same size and then the, to do the holes with a matched up and then drill the holes so that you're, you're ensuring the same height for the holes on both of those so you don't get more throw on one than the other. So. I'll get those done and show you what it looks like. So uh, now the motor mount's on there. I hot glued it in, taped over it just to keep the yellow going, and did a little slit to fold the tabs in. Um, you'll see something else on there I added. I basically took that piece that we had cut out from here, and I cut two slits off about uh, three quarters inch of an inch wide, taped them, and then just hot glued them. Um, and so they, they uh, kind of frame this area, and that's what this will ride in to um, hold the wing in place and keep it oriented correctly. Uh, so that's what you want to do there with, the, with one of your scrap pieces. Um, you can see the servo horns, or not servo horns, control horns I put in there. I just uh, put a slit in the, uh, you know, in the little foam board and uh, squirted some hot glue in there and shoved them in. Um, now for the, the elevator one. You're going to want to cut it a little bit smaller and do the same thing centered over that hole in the back and then just make sure it clears before you go and glue it because it's going to be tilting inward and upward. And then for the rudder, um, same thing, cut it a little shorter, a little thinner and put it down as far as you can and still get it on there. Uh, one bummer is I forgot to have this on the plans at the beginning, uh, right past the tip of the rudder. Um, or the you know top fin there. You're going to want to do about about an eighth inch wide, maybe a little less slit that goes all the way through into the body, and maybe about an inch and a half to two inches long. That's going to be so that your um, your linkage connects it there. 
forgot to mention that at the beginning. Um, next thing we're going to do here is get ready um, to install a servo. I did part of this already um, before. This is actually deeper now. Before it was just the depth of this initial piece. I basically put my razor in there and cut around the edges and then um, pulled up the paper and then I used a screwdriver and you can kind of just pull the foam out until it gets down to the paper. Um, and then um, I actually took the servo I was going to use and uh, measured the width of that cord and uh, then I cut a little slit off this, you know, the top part of the foam and back um, a little ways, basically it's to clear these other pieces I'm going to show you, but it gives the uh, cord a place to travel. Um, and that will get your servo fairly well down in there, but you're still going to need to build it up to be able to mount it. So you want to take some of um, that scrap piece of foam and uh, this will go over that wire there um, and on either end. And then you can either use uh, a couple of popsicle sticks or I've got some of this eighth inch um, what you call it, eighth inch uh, plywood, and I got to lift it up a little bit actually to get it on there now. But anyway, I'll basically glue those on on either side and drill a hole um, like that. And it kind of it, it's semi permanent there in that it's going to be hard to get that wire out if you want to get it out. If you actually have to cut through this, so make sure you don't uh, have plans for the servo anytime soon because it's going to stay in there. I'll go ahead and get that done and uh, start showing you how the linkage is going to work.